All right. Hi, everybody. We are here at 15 and 15. Um, and today we're really excited to have the collab uh, STEM affiliate Brad to present for us. So with that, I'm going to toss it right over to Brad. Well, hello, and thank you for joining me today to talk about my my experience here um, in, in introductory physics. And uh, you know, this is my second year here at Plymouth State, so I am new here yet, and I, I just know there are folks who have been trying these sorts of things that I'm trying as well. And so I'm hoping that this is just a continuation of a conversation of things that have been happening and that we can keep keep giving it a try. So a, a little background, Physics 1, Fall 2022. This is not our building. I just found a nice picture of lots of students doing hard work in physics because I forgot to take pictures last year. Um, what I thought would work. So what I've done for many years is a, a modeling instruction framework. This is uh, a framework with constructivist labs where the labs come first. And the classic example is we have a little uh, electronic car drive across the floor and students um, use timers and make marks on the floor and they come up with a, a model for constant velocity. And that's kind of like the textbook equation. And then we can use that to do problem solving rather than having learned it out of the textbook itself, we create um, the, the models for physics that we use. There's lots of whiteboarding, there's lots of problem solving, there's very little lecture. And this is this has gone well in many, many places I've, I've done this. Um, I also have been doing introductory physics for the life sciences curriculum. So I've restructured topics, I've done less of one thing, more of another thing in order to meet the, the needs and interests of life science students. So what happened when I brought this to, to Plymouth State? In University Physics One, which is my chemistry and meteorology majors and some computer science, this worked great, just like it ever has, and maybe even better. There was lots of active engagement from students in the class. In Physics One, which is for the life science majors, this was a crash and burn. Um, the lab structure, structure of this modeling, it didn't work well. There was very little student engagement in whiteboarding and group problem solving. And then the students didn't do well on their assessments. And I was like, huh, now what? It was confusing to see it work so well in one class and not in another class. Um, I, I felt very disheartened. I, I find myself, um, I can I can feel the attitude, the mood in the room. And so it's just like, oh, when it's when it's not working because I really, I really want it to work. Um, I knew that 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 COVID, what we've been through and we're still going through, um, was very much playing a, a role in this and sort of the how do we how do we bounce back from this? And so I knew I had to do something. And you know, I've I've been in teaching long enough that I could I knew I was like, I can try to pivot and do something else and see what happens. And then I thought, well, what about those clusters? So I was sitting in on the gen ed now home committee last semester. So I was hearing uh um last year I was hearing a lot about the different types of courses that were coming in things that were being done in the home program i had actually just submitted a new in-cap proposal that i was really excited to do so an entire semester of a project-based course and i was all into projects i think i can do something like this so i thought why not but i need to get a little bit of help first so who are you going to call the collab i called the collab and i got martha and and we we brainstormed for for an hour and we came up with some some great stuff. Sorry, I threw your picture up there, Martha. But um, so here here's what I decided to try in physics two, spring two thousand twenty three. I dipped my toes with a half semester project. I instead of going full commitment to a full semester, I decided half semester. Um, first half was physics as usual, F physics as usual. Second half was the project. Um, the, now the specs were interesting. I was thinking I was gonna get about 20 students. I had 28 in my physics one, only eight enrolled for physics two. So I thought, well, this is really gonna be um, a good group to test this on. Um, all of them were pre-physical therapy majors. Uh, so they were the ones who needed to take physics two. So it was a very kind of uniform group. Um, so I didn't get an interdisciplinary group as, as I might've liked to try a little bit with, but I knew I was having all life science majors anyway. So the first half of the semester when I was doing physics as usual, no different than physics one, same lack of engagement, not interested in group problem solving. It was even worse because it was eight students. So it was like, you could hear a pin drop. Um, but when we would have like a little, I would give them a little five minute break because we had two hour class periods. 
they would be chattering. It's like there was energy in this this bunch, and I wasn't I wasn't access accessing it. So I guess when I tried it, did it work? Yes. Oh my goodness! I just knocked my water over. I was so excited there. Uh, it worked. I couldn't actually believe how well it worked. The students they they came to life. They were curious. They were working hard. They were working so well together. They were open to my feedback. They were they were engaged in this process of co-creation. And they were so grateful as as well. Um, it, it really showed up in my um, my student evaluations. I mean, I, I love like the first line, but I'm not gonna like we're the best professors ever. I'll take it. Um, but like so many students were in, in mentioning, it's like we really love this this project. We we in, engaged me so much. I love the last one. We all enjoyed the project. And like at this point, I'd have I'd already had them give me so much other feedback on other forms and and student um, self evaluations. And it just it just went over so well, and I would I just wanted to be able to share what what I did, um, which is nothing probably brand new here, um, but was brand new to me, and I, I felt like worth sharing of what what can work in um, in our introductory classes. So this was this was what I put as part of my syllabus. It was very rough, and I think it was very much shaped uh, over what I had seen on some of the in-cap syllabi that I, I modeled my in-cap syllabus off of, which I've yet to teach that course. That'll be in the spring. I'll try that. So in week one, it was just having the students begin to make some connections, identifying how physics would connect with their um, career intentions and, and their, their major and what they were studying. And then in week two, we would begin to start shaping a project, exploring various themes and applications, different measurement tools. I knew for, for my class, because it was a lab class, it was gonna be measurement focused. They needed to use some kind of physics equipment uh, in order to take some measurements that would be related to what they were doing in physical therapy, which ended up being a very, a very natural, um, a very natural fit. So these first couple of weeks, I was, um, kind of moving things along, coming up with things for them to try. But then by week three, I was pushing more things on onto them. And this is this is the feel that I, I get from what is intended for the TWPs and for for in-cap courses that um, it's more emergent is is the word um, that I, I think Martha stressed the, the 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 most with me that, you know, I don't have to do that much. We let it emerge. And I try to use my expertise as being someone who's been in the field for so many years to 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 help them, you know, give them a container where they can then sort of, I guess, blossom out of. Um, so then weeks four to six then become this very general, OK, let's work on the project. And then I check in with them and see how they're doing. Um, project completion in that seventh week and reflection. So all of this was done right after spring break. So basically they came back from spring break and off we were rolling. And then the final exam period I used as the project presentation. And I had a couple of, of guests come in and, and also listen to it uh, as well. Now, I know what the, the, arg the number one argument against this is going to be. Doesn't this mean I'll cover less content in my course? Yes, probably a lot less. This is a significant departure from business as usual. I will take a moment to stand on my soapbox <laughs> of, I, I mean, there's so many things that can be said, but if, if the students, aren't feeling engaged, if if they're just going through two chapters every single week, are we really giving them something that's that's long lasting with, with what is going on in our lectures? And with so much research out there right now that is showing that, um, you know, lecture isn't the primary way. It is, it is a way and should not be eliminated entirely, but that it's just one of many modes where learning can occur. And, and I, I really wanted to try this idea of a project that, okay, we'll cover less content. And I think I am in a position where, you know, physics is not a major here. Any student taking physics does not have future physics courses they're preparing for. So I, I know that um, I don't have any content restrictions. I don't have any accrediting body for my major that is looking for certain content. So there, I know there will be challenging cases for, for other people to think about. But at the same time, 
all that content that we're teaching them, are they really walking away from it? I think back to my graduate school days and what was more memorable, meaningful, impactful for me, it was, you know, being in the research lab, doing the work um, with a smaller set of content that I became very strong in, in the courses, I, I just recycled some of my, my notes last year from graduate school. And I was like, wow, I could do that at one point. I certainly can't anymore. <laughs> and I haven't been able to for a long time. So, so what we're, what they're learning in lecture, you know, is there a way that we can really build some solid skills and some content knowledge and be okay if they don't get all of it? And I know that's a very complex question and, and accrediting bodies can make it even more com complex as well. But the, the, the sort, those are the sorts of, of uh, conversations that I'm willing to wrestle with and, and I want to wrestle with. How am I doing? Four minutes. So um, I just wanted to give a, a week by week itinerary, just kind of step through how it looked a little bit more, just in case you're kind of curious how it worked out and just say a few words about that. And then I'm very much happy to, when we run out of time and haven't gotten through all that, to be able to um, talk with, with folks who are interested in what I did and want to share what they have tried as as well. I um, actually spoke with um, Heather Doherty this, this morning briefly, and, and she said that maybe something like this had happened in chemistry a few years ago before COVID, and it kind of hasn't come back online. So I'll be really interested to hear some of the folks who have tried this in the introductory courses. But I just thought it just worked so well um, that I'm you know just bubbling in excitement thinking about that last semester and how I'm going to try that again in, in physics too. And I might jump into a full, a full year project or maybe two half semester um, projects. So this is the, a summary of the emergent nature of the, the project. Um, much of it I planned only after the previous class was done. So th this was, this felt very new to me that, um, you know, I didn't come in with the whole semester planned. It's, it was very much, okay, here's what we did today. What do I think is going to really help push us forward next time? Um, while always gathering feedback and input from the students where they thought we should be going, especially after the first couple of weeks, putting it more on them. And when I saw them having trouble, I would kind of hop in and, and do a little something with them. So and th these were, and here what I'm going to show, these were just the notes that I was taking uh, after each class. And the, the, the ones like, these are basically my, my uh, lecture notes. This is what I was preparing for myself going into it. And I would just, you know, the first class is coming with a question. What are four or five connections between your field of physical therapy uh, and physics? And what are the primary measurement tools and modalities that you might use? And so I put them together in their groups and they discuss that in class. And then I gave them a homework assignment to dig into those a little bit deeper. Um, so so we we came back and they gave little presentations. One group talked about a, a goniometer, another about force plates, another um, looked into the electrical side of things. Um, because these were sort of the main topics where a project could hone in on one of those, um, or maybe a combination of, of things. So then by the second week, we're, we're digging in a little bit further, um, kind of starting to think about, so class number three, which one of these do we really want to do? And then I pulled out some of the equipment in the lab, pulled out some force plates. We could try some motion analysis, and the students had a chance, both this class and the next class, to... Uh, oh yeah, the four, four, three and four are both there. Um, to actually try the equipment and and play around with it themselves and see what direction they might want to go. And then by the the fifth week, now we actually moved over to the the HPC lab. We left Boyd Hall and we all went over to to their space um, and started looking at some of the equipment they had that could make connections. So I really enjoyed doing doing that. We almost ended up making an appointment to go to a physical therapy PA office and. Um, and try something there. But then this was starting to move more towards them. Now we're in their space uh, where we're thinking about their types of experiments, how they're gonna make that direct connection. And I think it is just about 12.15. So um, the, these slides will be will be ready, but um, they the, the week four, they did a, a proposal presentation. Um, it was like a half hour presentation they had to, to give to me and a few other folks um, about what they wanna do. And then after that, they they more they kind of took it over themselves and each day they really was about doing the experiments and analysis and I was there to just kind of help be a sounding board and to to help them with the, the physics pieces as it came through and by the end um, week seven a reflection and week eight was the presentation and there we go that's how that's how I did it and 15 minutes flies by fast 
Uh, and I'm really looking forward to continuing the conversation with any folks who are interested in, in chatting about this and how it worked. You did awesome, right on time. Um, one of the hallmarks of 15 and 15 is that we start on time and we end on time. So I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody, but I'm gonna stop recording and I'm sure Brad will stick around for a few minutes. So feel free to stay and ask questions if you want, but otherwise no pressure at all. We know you gotta get on to your next thing. So we'll see you later. <laughs>